Chairman Adam. Yeah. And good evening. <laughs> Tonight is Tuesday, September 24th, 2019. I will call this meeting of the Stowe Board of Selectmen to order at 7 p.m. And we will begin, as we always do, with public input on anything that is not on the agenda. Do I have anything? Uh, I don't. And uh, Chairman's comments. I also don't have anything on Chairman's comments unless somebody's got a suggestion that I haven't heard. No. All right. So this meeting is going pretty fast so far. Um, <laughs> so we have uh, one set of minutes to do. Um, and Maureen, thank you for getting these together under difficult circumstances. Appreciate it. Um, I have a few comments. Does anybody else have anything at this point? No, sir. Um, Nothing of substance. Yeah. I'm wondering if I can just... So my comments are very small. Um, the spelling of Gregor Trinkhouse Randall's name, there's no H. Um, page two, um, it says I move. Obviously, that has to be changed to whoever moved and doesn't have a, this is on the, the fire chief, the, the life of the capital asset. And um, Again, the use of the first person down below under town minister's report served with me. Uh, we can change that. And then at the very end, where I'm giving a liaison report on the library building committee, um, he, meaning me, said that he has been speaking. It's actually he plans to speak with Chris Sardo and all the authorities, and I know that that's true because I haven't done it yet. Um, if it's okay with members of the board, I'll accept a motion to approve them um, as amended, and I'll work with Maureen offline to give her these very small comments. So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded to approve the minutes of September 10th, 2019, as amended. Further discussion? Seeing the hearing none, all those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Maureen, please, please remind me. Okay. Um, but I'm around tomorrow. I could I could give this stuff to you. <coughs> and um, correspondence. Correspondence was a little thick this these past two weeks. Um, does anybody see anything in correspondence that they want to suggest for a future agenda? Going once. Going twice. Seeing nothing. Okay. Very good. Um, and now we get to the uh, substance. Biggest substance of our meeting um you know i'm i'm just I'm, I'm thinking off the cuff here um does it make sense to do the items involving the treasurer first does to me we have several we have more people here for the treasurer's item than we do for the board of health i have no <laughs> offense um and i like to clear people out if i can is that okay no Clear them out in a good sense. I'm assuming they have. <laughs> you clarified. I'm assuming they have other things they want to do. So, <laughs> you know, we'll really go to home. Yeah, other things they want to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, Try to be polite here. So, um, so I think we'll go right to item number six, if we might, Pam, the signing of the bond for the fire truck, the town building, HVAC, and the Lower Village Roadway. Do you want to join us? Oh my God! Look at that stack of yeah. paper. Oh what wow! Time? Okay. She, she saved it all for this, this last time. This was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should have stopped me. Oh boy. Um, Do you want to explain for well, people playing? Well, we are borrowing to pay for the new fire truck, the town building, HVAC system, and um, the second part of the Lower Village project, which came to two million four hundred seventy-five thousand um, dollars. Was purchased by Robert Bard and Company, uh, who gave us a premium of $174,000. And we're using $125,000 of that premium to reduce the amount of the bond, so we're only borrowing $2,350,000. And our net interest cost is 1.918%. Okay. And you've prepared <coughs> a vote for us to take. Yes. That will be signed by the clerk. <laughs> It is very lengthy, so rather than have somebody read it all, um, I will say that I'll accept a motion, and please check me that this is right. I will accept a motion 
uh, to approve the sale of $2,350,000 in general obligation municipal purpose bonds of, of 2019 bonds dated September 27, 2019 to Robert W. Baird and Company at the price of $2,520,600.99 and accrued interest in the form um, provided by Bond Council in the form and on the terms provided by Bond Council this day. Is that acceptable? Mr. Yeah. Chairman, if you might, um, could we date that particular document with scissors? Does, does not have today's date on it. And then I was oh, the ones I have have today's date. Yes, and it's dated at the end. Oh, at the end. I'm so sorry. We're good. So, do I have a motion as I just said? So, so moved. moved. Okay, and <laughs> by second. 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 So, second. motion made and seconded to approve the sale of $2.35 million <laughs> in general obligation bonds mm -hmm. at the price of $2.52 million to Robbie Dever Baird and Company, Inc., uh, in the form and on the terms as prepared by Bond Council this same date. Further discussion? Mr. Ryan? Um, just out of curiosity, <coughs> I understand getting the bond premium of 175000 approximately, and you're applying 125 to the point. Where would the other fifty go? Uh, some of it's going to pay uh, the borrowing costs that you have to pay Hilltop Securities, our advisor, and the Bond Council. And Standard and Poor's is charging us for you because they rated us again, which we're still a triple A. Um, and then there'll be a little bit left. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't have the exact figures right here. That will be reserved um, for future projects. Um, that's what we have to do now with the premiums. Okay. Um, the only other thing I noticed on the, the, the long winded version of this <laughs> that, you know, the, the interest rate seems to fluctuate and I understand that the bond premium essential for all intents and purposes reduces Reduce the effective it. rate yeah. but um, it, it just seemed odd to me that it goes five percent five percent five percent two percent two percent five percent so on and so forth so <coughs> not being That's one of the financial <laughs> gurus of the world I I am somewhat baffled by the concept um, but yeah I'm I really That's the way they structured it, um, this, this company. We had um, eight bids. They all structured them differently. Because they resell them to private investors um, with like a face value of 5%, even though that's not what we're paying. Um, <laughs> I don't Is your point, that's an interesting point, is your point that longer-term bonds are usually at higher interest rates? Well, it, this is the reverse. It, actually, the lo a lot of the longer-term ones, and you know, I understand the, the, I'll call it less than 2%, which is what I would expect. It just seems, you know, it's counterintuitive to me that, that we would be getting 2 point some odd percent, but the bonds would say 5%, so. That's how they make money. Yeah. yeah. It's a practice of the secondary market. Mm. Pam, you can get back to us in November about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometime in November? <laughs> Um, interesting uh, I, question, though. Yeah, it's you know, I'm just looking at it, I, I was. Yeah, it doesn't really. But as long as we're paying an effective rate of yeah, under two percent. All, right. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Seeing, hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions. Let's prove unanimously. And now we have to. Okay. Well, I have four originals of that vote um, for Courtney to sign. I don't bring these ceremonial pens like Mr. Brown. Actually, like, there's uh, Mr. Four, Burke does. Four, four, that, four, four, four of that. And then there's four of this one. Next page. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Four. Yeah. Every place is a yellow oh, I see. I see. Right there. Okay. Um, Sorry about that. That's all right. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't want to my paper. I'm not as expeditious as you are. <coughs> you taught me in law school. So, Mr. Chairman, I have some filler for the time that we're signing. Go ahead. Um, my assist assistant and I attended the 
clerk's conference in Springfield last week, and um, we had some updates from the elections division about the upcoming election years in 2020 and primaries and um, there's a lot more there you go. And um, getting we're gearing up already. We're petitions will be, uh, initiative petitions are being circulated, and over 80,000 signatures have to be gathered and statewide for the petitions. So um, we're looking forward to the election year next year. Not sure if there'll be early voting for the March 3rd primary, but we know there will be for the November um, state election. So how many initiative uh, petitions are out there? I believe there are at least 10 circulating. Um, two are constitutional amendments and four are, are, are the, and the others are, um, will be on the, possibly be on the November ballot. Um, there's a soul cycle. 80,000 signatures have to be certified statewide. And then the legislature has an opportunity to pass that legislation on their own. And then if they don't, then there's another round of at least 10,000 more signatures. So these are all ones that have been approved by the Attorney General? Uh, by the Attorney General. And it wow. includes ranked voting. Yeah, um, I knew that about that one. I don't know about that Ranked choice voting. Oh, and city Cambridge. Right, Cambridge does it as well as there's several cities in the United States as well as Maine did it statewide. Um, it's been something involved in um, other countries for hundreds of years. I would just point out, I was personal director of the city of Cambridge. They still have proportional, I mean, they that, do? That, yes, that they process. do. They've been doing it for 40 them, years. It took them seven days to count the ballots. It's possible. Just before they <laughs> completed the city council. So um, I've had an opportunity to hear two um, presentations, actually three, and um, it's something I would certainly consider further, but we're going to try to organize um, a local um, event in town, um, invite um, neighboring towns and people to have a presentation on that. And we're also going to work on um, a public records law workshop and an open meeting law workshop. So we have a lot ahead of us to, Very good. to work on. Thank you. I'd just like to comment, I'm so glad we got the air conditioner that we can look at longingly. <laughs> well, we can't turn it on. I know, because it's Stow TV. Yes. So, um, <laughs> We're grateful for Stow TV. Well, and you're in your suit coat, you can't I'm take just, it off. I love it, it's great. <laughs> we'll just have to have a shift jacket. You feel this at you, I your sartorial I may have to do that. Do you want to check this? Do you want to I'll sign my letter. Yeah, I'll sign my letter. I saw that one. I saw that one. I saw that one. I jumped out at him. I'm trying to be readable. Take the time. Sorry? That's the only one that I haven't seen. Also, the other thing I wanted to add is the 2020 census. Um, we done in April, but we're doing a lot of work now on getting addresses, active addresses. Um, into the database and trying to get all the um, parties to um, involved to answer and um, we hope to have a really good turnout and count and um, Massachusetts is really good at it um, and um, but I'm pretty confident that Stowe's information is pretty accurate and uh, but um, you know residents will be getting mail soon multiple ways and we'll be able to do it online for the first time. I would just like to ask the treasurer, is this something you whipped up this afternoon for us to sign? <laughs> Good grief. No. What, what she a, wanted to go out with a bang. Bla with a, <laughs> in a blaze of glory. Well, we wanted to get all this borrowing done. I was just yeah. going to do a band, but um, the band in this amount I, I say that. It, I say that. It was a joke. I'm just as a pra no in, pra in praise of the effort. Uh -huh. no, that well, I, I actually didn't prepare these myself. They were sent to me. So <laughs> wait, finish the thought. So a, um, a ban would have been at a just for one year. Yeah. Um, then we would have to do it again next year, and they no. thought if we did it this way, it would save us about four thousand dollars in borrowing costs. So. That's pretty good. Plus, it's all done. <laughs> 
I'm conceding to feet. Oh, one last thing about initiatives for anybody who's listening. It would be greatly appreciated whenever anybody signs one that they write legibly because my office has to, and the other clerks have to certify the signatures. And if we can't read them, it's very difficult. Well, I know it is at 125 Road, so it's a given. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the Reinhardt system. Anyway, are they done up there? Because I can sign mine later. I think we're waiting for Courtney. You got one more to do? All right. Um, can I get... Can I continue, Courtney? Sure. Um, and next on the agenda, I want to make sure that we don't have any other business to take care of. Ooh, somebody took my agenda. May I? <laughs> I think you must have given it to me. I, 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 I think I did. It's part I, of I, one of the files. I think you signed, I signed a copy of it. Back of it. Uh, no. no. I'll leave you here to get Okay. So Pam, if you're done with that, yes. yeah, I think that's yours too. Thank you. Our next duty is to mark the occasion of your impending retirement um, and to say thank you. And I believe that you've been with us for over 30 years. Is that right? Why don't you tell everyone what your career here has existed has, um, has consisted of? Well, I've been in the Treasurer Collector's Office for 32 years. I started as financial clerk and I became assistant treasurer and then treasurer collector. How many years uh, ago was that? 32, well, treasurer collector, 14? 14, mm -hmm. 14, yeah. I started when I was a baby. <laughs> 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 yeah. Precocious. And, yes, I also worked at the library for four years um, during high school, so I actually was 36 years in. So. You were still native? Yep. The precious yeah. few of you around yeah. in, in a public <laughs> office. Yeah. The present company excluded. <laughs> So basically, your office makes sure that things and people get paid. Um, but I wanted to comment on something, which is, you know, one of the things that we're so proud of in this town, and Mr. Wrigley gets his share of the credit here, is our bond rating and how we handle our borrowing. Um, and you, in a, a quiet and unassuming way, are an extremely important part of that. Um, as we were discussing just a moment before, it's not purely mechanical. There's a fair amount of judgment that has to go into it. Not only what kinds of bonds have to get issued, but when they get issued to get the most advantageous um, interest rate. There's a lot of work, I believe, with bond counsel. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, to make sure that all the wording is correct. Um, there's they're very picky. <laughs> they're very picky. But that's, that's the trick to at least that part of your job, I think. Please correct me if I'm wrong, which is there's a fair amount of judgment, a fair amount of timing, and then the detail dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And in the over nine years that I've been a selectman, I have certainly never seen any of that done anything other than absolutely perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a big part of why this town financially works as well as it does. And I just want you to know that we all know that and we appreciate it. Um, we're counting on whoever succeeds you to carry that on, um, and we very much appreciate it. Do you have anything you want to add before I read? The just, and we all work together, the assessors, the accountant, and people in my office. To we all work together to make the, the finances work. It's not just me. Anybody have anything they want to add? Just a question. Sure. Do you have any great, exciting plans for travel or exploration of the universe? <laughs> um, Maine. I'm going to go to Maine. <laughs> Where do you go, Maine? Um, well, my mom is buying a house in Rangeley. Wow. Um, next week. Actually, my last day here. <laughs> so I'm going to. I have to go visit her. She lives in Kenny Bunkport, so I have that. And then I have my own camp up by Bangor, so I'm oh, nice. be hopping around Maine. Very nice. Um, nice. I place. haven't planned beyond that. So. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Hey, that's wonderful. Yeah. Billy, you want to say anything? I do. It's been a privilege, and I've enjoyed 
I've only been here 28 years, so uh, <laughs> a little well ahead of me in advancing. We made the right decision to promote you, and it's something that we aspire to do for our good employees because the uh, opportunities for advancement are narrow in a small business like this. But it is also the case that working with the assessors, working within your office, and working with the accountant, um, each year there's deliverables that I can't do anything with the budget until and unless they're done. We can't, for example, get certified free cash until all of the year-end reports are submitted and that comes from multiple sources and a big part of that um, is from the Treasurer Collector's Office. And we're always prompt in getting it in so that at special town meetings in the fall each year, if I need it, we've got free cash certified and we use it. Um, the alternative would be that you'd have to raise taxes. Uh, so all of that happens every year routinely. Most people aren't aware of it. And it's always worked well for the people that do it here, and they're a big part of it. So I appreciate all of that. And um, especially when I'm looking for alt <laughs> innumerable alternative <laughs> debt schedules. And I do a lot of what if. And um, you know, our financial advisor, your team, it's a big part of that. So um, we've had a great team here with regard to producing <coughs> documents and getting to the vision on time because the business they're in is one of direct uncertainty. And if you don't do A, you don't get B. Right. It's that simple. And it's good to have a team you can rely on with things like that. Well, and they're close by too, so I can right. always, <laughs> reach out and touch somebody. Anybody else on the board? Yes. Hi, I'm Kathy Murphy. I'm Pam's assistant treasure collector. I just wanted to thank her for hiring me and giving me the opportunity to work under. It's been great. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you. Linda? Um, I've worked with Pam for 19 years and right next to the office and i um, going to miss working with her. She's very, um, I found her to be friendly, professional, and I know our office is going to miss seeing her every day. So thank you. We appreciate you. Working. Yes. And we will, Miss Pam. I came in 2005 when she moved up to treasurer collector, and at that time, she hired me as the assistant treasurer collector. I've since retired and just do part-time payroll, but I still am in the loop, and we are a good team. We work together, and we keep things rolling. And we will miss her. Terrific. Absolutely. Pam, thank you, all of you. Thank you. Um, and let me read the text of the certificate that we have for you, which is just a token of our appreciation. Um, on this. 24th day of September 2019, the Stowe Board of Selectmen hereby expresses its sincere appreciation to Pamela Landry for more than 30 years of service to the town of Stowe in the Treasurer Collector's Office. Pam grew up in Stowe and lived across the street from where the town building now stands. Although she worked at the library during her high school years, she began her career as a financial clerk in the Treasurer Collector's Office in 1987. She was promoted to Assistant Treasurer Collector in 1995 and then was appointed treasurer collector in 2005. With her diligent, thorough, and knowledgeable manner, Pam is well respected among her colleagues and her broad knowledge of the town and its history provide her with a perspective that others lack. On behalf of the entire town, the Board of Selectmen wishes Pam an enjoyable retirement filled with good health, happiness, enjoyment of family, especially her grandson, and lots of time to relax at the lake and her vacation home in Maine. Do I have a motion to so issue a certificate in that second. form? Do I have a second? Motion made and second to issue a certificate of appreciation to Pamela Landry in the form that I just read. Further discussion? Seeing and hearing, Mr. Ryan. I just wanted to have one question. Around budget time, did you ever unplug your phone so Bill couldn't get you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Bill never calls you. He stops in our emails. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just wanted to, I was just curious. He didn't, I know he didn't call us on a cell phone. <laughs> no, he didn't call on a cell phone. <laughs> All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And that's unanimous. Pam, thank you so much. Thank you. Very much appreciate Oh, do you want me? And sure. Okay. <laughs> He's got to put his coat back oh, on. Put the coat back on. He's going to grab him right now. You know, when he, you know, when he runs for lieutenant governor, <laughs> yeah, he wants to have this. Yeah, Why yeah. lieutenant governor? Of all the <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
attorney general. Shows he's been thinking about it, doesn't it? Attorney general. Attorney general. Stepping stone. We're signing it first. Oh, a mere formality. <laughs> Makes sense. Would you check to make sure that we all sign that? <laughs> <laughs> Should it be notarized? <laughs> it's duly noted. It sounds <laughs> forced. It's on TV, so it's got to be real. I'm signing with my fiscally yeah. responsible where pen. Where are you going to be? Where are you going to retire? Which I think I stole from one. Maine. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there goes your lieutenant governor. There, there you go. go. Right there. He's, 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 he's going. going. <laughs> You're thinking of vacation. Yep. We must have a little bit of like 20 years. Somebody going to move the clock? Oh, it might be now. <laughs> that takes a lot of preparation. It does. <laughs> These little ceremonial pictures. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's Linda's. That was Linda's down, innovation to take the clock so down. We do, oh, yeah. What we do is we do. The graphic group. No. How do we do this again? <laughs> we do. <laughs> did a good job. We do that, and we both hold that. That's it. And we look at the camera. It's the selection. <laughs> look at the camera. It's fine. <laughs> Those pictures Thank could be you. worth Good. something Thank someday. <laughs> That's right. Thank Thank you so much. I can, we can say, I know I'm glad. Good luck and good health. Yeah. Above all. <laughs> I may have to call you now. It's long distance. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. Appreciate it. Come on, we'll Thank go for drinks. <laughs> That's the thing to do. That's the thing to do. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. I think it probably would have been about a month before we noticed. Uh, let's see. I don't know. No, I would have noticed as soon as Brian started talking. <laughs> There's a little knob. It's got to there, go you go. there you Thank go. Thank you. It crashes halfway through. <laughs> get it. All right. Um, and that was fun. And now I think we'll get back to the Board of Health item. Thank you. Mary, yeah. Marcia, you want to join us? Introduce yourselves for the Cameron and people at home. I'm Mary McDowell, I'm the uh, Board of Health Chairperson. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Shake your head though. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think I know you. Hi, Mary. Hi, Good Jim. to see you. But you have to introduce yourself to the camera. I'm Marsha Rising, <laughs> longtime oh. member. And, and what's your address? Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Marsha. Well, thank you for having us tonight. Well, thank you for coming. And um, you guys have been in the center of several very important issues recently, although as I was saying to you before we started and to some of my colleagues, um, I saw your September 12th meeting, I thought it was really well done and very informative. Um, on the whole, people who attended seemed to be very satisfied with what they heard. But I wanted to give you a chance to kind of update perhaps a wider audience. That's a little bit of ego, assuming we have a bigger audience than you guys do. Um, <coughs> So you've been in the center of the issues about uh, Tripoli, uh, the closing of the lake, and PFAS. So I'd kind of like to, if we could, take them up in that order. Sure. Um, so let's start with Tripoli, which okay. I'm hoping is on its way to being a non-issue. Right, and that's what we're um, hoping for, too. And Marcia, just interject if I miss anything. So um, at the meeting, which for anybody who's watching this, you can see it on YouTube if you'd like to watch the whole thing. Um, so what we talked about is there's about a 55,000 acre spray area that was being covered, I think it was last week, maybe about 10 days ago over a week span, which was all totally based on weather, wind, precipitation. And you could go every morning and see if your area was sprayed. There was no way to find out when you were going to be sprayed. It was just too variable. Um, so we've been kind of checking that off and seeing and Stowe was definitely sprayed. Um, but at this point, we're really at the mercy of Mother Nature because there's no other planned sprays that we've been told about. Um, and we're just really, I'm hoping for cooler weather and the mosquito count just going down. So that's, that's where it is right now. First frost usually takes care of all mosquitoes, right? right? right. So we're close. We're close. Although this recent spate of warm weather. Yeah. And this weekend doesn't look too much cooler, so we're, we're hoping. Um, but it really is up to individuals and families to make sure that they just adhere to those precautions that we put out there. Don't go out at dusk. If you have to go out, to out at dusk to walk your dog or something, wear long sleeves, put bug spray on. Um, you know, I know in a lot of areas they've moved practices to different times of the day. It's just really using some common sense methods to keep yourself and your family safe. Right. 
Um, just one quick update. Yes, Marcia. I went on to check the um, map, the mm -hmm. spraying map, and the whole area that was originally outlined has been sprayed, but they also had a list of dates, and it looks like they're going to be spraying certain areas um, into well into October. Okay. Only like the second spray? Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's interesting, some of the free flight tracker apps that are available on your phone, you can see the spraying plane going, and it, it's very accurate. You can tell right when it's going to go over your house. Um, and they were doing a track from Waltham to 495, back and yeah. forth, on several nights. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hawks. When we use the pronoun they, who was actually, I mean, it's the state, what, what is the state board of health? Who, who was authorizing the planes to go spray all that stuff? There was a, um, actually a cadre of people. The um, Department of Public Health, um, DEP, um, and um, a group that they had uh, someone in charge of equipment and checking to see when the planes were available. They weren't always all available, and they had to set the their schedules. Planes. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and mm -hmm. the DEP, I um, mean, um, Department of Public Health, did have an hour and a half, two hour uh, phone conference call at the beginning all of, the, of all of this when we were informed about the mapping and the flying mm -hmm. and how long it was going to be and when they were going to start, which was this September the, the 10th. Mm -hmm. And um, and they have kept us informed if there have been any major changes. But but anybody can go on to, uh, to the Triple E map and, and um, see what's happening. And it turns out, um, I, I just, I read this, that we had the perfect storm for this triple E increase because we had a wet spring mm -hmm. and then summer into fall we had hot heat and wet and the mosquitoes just love it and people don't stop and think you ask you make sure you empty the bird bath but if you've got a kid a child's pail in the yard that's gathering water. Even a small, the like small, a like the a smallest tea little puddle. Right. The mosquitoes just gravitate right there. So, wow. it's um, you know it's hard to keep track of of everything that you're supposed to do, but you really have to be vigilant. And just to interject, um, the other people on that call too, they had um, consultants on it that were part of organic farming because it was a big concern of where the spray was going to go. Um, and also um, water experts too, so they stayed away from certain bodies of water and um, certified organic farms um, as best as they could. So. Oh yeah, the Department of Agriculture was on that phone call. Let me give members of the board, my colleagues over here, anything? Brian? One follow-up on that, then maybe we can go on to the lake. Um, uh, oh, uh, if the spring's going to continue, um, where can people find the information about what to do? Close the windows, bring the pets in. Is it on our website? Is there a link? It's on our on website, and they can also go on um, the D, uh, public health. If they put it, if website. they search just Triple E spray in yep. Massachusetts, it'll come up. Yep. Yeah. And my understanding is that when it's sprayed, by the next morning, mm -hmm. when the sun comes up and reaches a. Uh, a certain temperature, not very high. Mm -hmm. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yep. Yeah. So it's oftentimes, high. oftentimes it's even gone before it hits the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. And they have a that's a particular problem with wooded areas um, because like it doesn't get filtered down. Okay. So that's why there's been ground spraying that's also gone on. And we work with the Central Mass Mosquito Control District. So do they do the ground spraying and then when it gets to the level of aerial spraying, we, we got to call in somebody else, we got to call in bigger state mm -hmm. departments. One final question on this, um, is there anything we should be doing differently for next year? And I'm going to ask that question with regard to all of the all issues. Of this, right? Do you want to address it then? Please, okay. yeah. Um, so for next year, the board, um, in conjunction with a couple of other um, organizations in town, Lake Boone Commission, Lake Boone Association, Rec Department, and we'll all identify some other ones too over the winter, we're all going to get together, put together a plan that will 
kind of preemptively address these issues for next year. Oh, I'm talking just about Triple E right now. No, that's going to be oh, included okay. in it too. Okay. Um, just getting the word out about how you can protect yourself. Um, just more public awareness. So the Triple E and the lake issue are going to come together with this committee that we're going to do over the winter. Great segue, I think. Okay. Um, let's talk about the lake issue. I think sure. um, the fundamentals. Um, there was a <coughs> August 18th, I think, um, a lifeguard spotted what he or she thought was blue-green algae. I think that person deserves a pat on the back, but I know they're at the train from what you told me. Um, Jim, Jim G from Neshoba uh, came in, verified that it looked suspicious. That same day. That same day. And then uh, water samples, it, it took a while, but some samples were sent out to a lab in Rhode Island. Do you want to pick it up from there? Sure. So the water samples were sent out. We got the first testing back um, August, um, September 10th, and the levels were just underneath for the, um, the uh, bacteria that are harmful. Um, but the test requires that it's two tests a week apart, and so we had to do another test the following week, and that test result came back last Thursday, I believe, and um, the, the um, numbers were actually elevated. And so that's why the lake is still closed. We're still recommending people don't go in the water, don't leave pets in the water. Um, and we're still, I have to get with Jim tomorrow to figure out if we're going to do another round of testing. Um, I think we need to kind of look at the weather and what the, the scope of that is going to look like for the rest of September into October, if it's going to be hot, if people are going to want to go into the lake. But um, at this point, the board only has jurisdiction over the public beach. We don't have um, people's docks and stuff, and they're sending in a lot of pictures of these algae blooms, if you will, in front of their docks. Um, but we can only test in front of the in front of the. So lake. that means we don't technically have the authority to to quote unquote <laughs> close the lake. We can close the beach. We can close the beach. And have. And we have put strong heavy recommendations okay. with the Lake Commission and Association's backing that it should, it should be closed. And the beach only gets reopened when we get another test sample at least one week. Two. Two. Two that are above that, oh, so under so the level. So even though we had one that was under, that doesn't count because be we had two consecutive. Even so, Ms. Jim. Well, let me, let me just finish. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand this. So, um, okay. Um, so the lake remains clear. Now I, I forgot my train of thought. So why don't I let Mr. Hawks? Go yeah, a couple ahead. things. Um, at your meeting on the 20, whatever it was, the fo Thursday following the 18th, I asked Jim G um, to clarify a statement he made um, in his report to you before you invited public comment. Best I can paraphrase it was uh, that if your board uh, closes public beach, uh, DEP, and I can't remember the verb, uh, requires, authorizes, suggests, I forgot what it was, but I asked him about it because I said, does that mean, did I hear you say that you close the lake? And he said, Yes. So I guess the question that I, as kind of been around the lake a long time, you know, people questioning, can you just kind of parse that for me? You said you closed, you, you said your only authority was to close the beach. Jim said you could close the lake. There was a lot of confusion around that distinction among all the people around the lake. So which is it? Well, we can test the water at the at the beach because that's public access, but we can't test it around the rest of the lake. And it just kind of goes to show if, if these levels are coming up high and it's dangerous, that we are going to close the lake. But, I mean, we are. It's a public health issue. Well, so, and it, I think, and I'd have to look at the exact language, but the Department of Public Health gives it to the local boards of health to make that decision. Okay, just for historical background, sure. Marsha will probably remember this when Jack Wallace was here. I we oh, had, yes. And I drove my boat, and Jack asked me, I need to take samples in the middle of the first, second, and third basins. I drove my boat with Jack, and he leaned over the front and mm -hmm. got his samples. Was there any request or suggestion that that be done this time? 
Mm, not this time, but that's a really good suggestion for the winter committee to go over, see if that's something that we could do. I think, I know that took place in like the early 2000s? 2010. Right. So I don't know if the testing is different, if it has to be a certain depth or what. I mean, I'd have to look into it. Um, but that's certainly something we can look at yeah, for next year. Because certainly we have a police boat and we have a Lake Boom yeah. Commission boat. So it could have been done. Yeah. And I do know, just to follow up on that, you know, we, we've seen the blooms at the beach and we've gotten some pictures from people at was it Pine Point? Pine Point. Pine Point. Across but the beach. people I know on the lake say, the water in front of my dock is crystal clear. It's fine. It's like, that's, that's I know, but it moves because the lake water The reason moves. it's crystal clear is because all of the nutrients are being absorbed by the algae. Mm -hmm. and, right, it's, it's scooching, yeah, but that why. algae bloom moves around too, so yes. it's... Yeah, we just have to be and safe. The little only other question, I, and then I'll yield the floor. Uh, the, the delay between August 18 and getting between when you finally did the first sample was somewhere around 18 days. It was somewhere in there. Why? I'm getting a lot of questions from people. Why was it so long? Actually, I don't know if it was 18 days. I'd have, let me look well, at my notes. Well, maybe 17, maybe 16. But I guess the question would be... So actually, the lifeguard called on the 23rd, not the 18th. No, that's incorrect. Yeah, lifeguard called uh, with concerns on August 23rd. That's, that is when they called. Okay. And Stand then, um, let's see, on Tuesday... You, you met the following Thursday night when, right, when I gave quite a speech, as I and recall. Then I do know that Labor Day was there and the labs were closed. So I know part of it was the delay was Labor Day, but then also um, finding a lab because around here the only lab that we could find that would do the tests that we needed was in Rhode Island. And Jim brought that down on the Friday of Labor Day weekend or the Friday after? He drove down on Saturday. Right. Oh, Labor Day weekend. But it sounds like regardless of when the samples were pulled, since the samples are still coming back high as late as last Thursday, mm -hmm. no matter what the exact timing, the lake would still be closed. Yes. So what this all boils down to, really, uh, is an opportunity to learn for next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's 100%. fair to say, I think it's fair to say we were a little reactive this year. Mm -hmm. Sounds to me like no harm done because, thank God, somebody reacted fast and closed the lake. But an opportunity to learn some lessons. Is that fair to say? A hundred percent. Okay. Yep. 100%. Um, may I go to Mr. Burke or somebody else? Can I take the second round? Yes. Thanks. Well, a second round? No. <laughs> well, when you come after. I'd like, I, one more question. I, I would yield to Mr. Hawks at this point keep his train of thought going. Okay. That's that's hard to do. But I want it's a narrow gauge train. I want to keep everybody. <laughs> I can be patient. Um, no, please. Now i got to refocus, so please, I'll come, uh, um, come back to you. a really quick question. Courtney. Um, you said you were only able to test at the beach because it was public access. Is that because that's your jurisdiction? That that's the correct. public is going to use the beach? And the, statu the statutory regulation is that we have to test weekly at the town beach uh, where there are everything is going on that is our territory mm -hmm. the town mm -hmm. beach it's now it happens it's to be associated with the whole rest of the access. lake right. Right. Yeah. So, so and the question and it, there is a statement about if you have to close your beach um, I know there's a statement that says they recommend it is recommended mm -hmm. that the whole body of water be closed down. So I guess my you just have to find the morning. my sort of follow up question is, does it make any sense, or would it, for general public safety of people using the lake, the larger lake rather than just the beach, is there any anything that would support you in getting data around the lake, like like going out on a boat and taking right. samples that would help people understand that that you've not just t done one test in one corner of the whole mm -hmm. big area but that you're you're looking at you know a group of samples and this is for 
for the safety of much larger groups yeah. than just those using the beach. One of the issues is where do you do the testing? Um, We've yeah. had suggestions like one basin, like a test from every basin just to mm -hmm. see the differences. Um, and that's something we'll talk about over the winter. Um, but I mean, I, we would, I can't imagine, and I don't know off the top of my head, that, you know, Department of Public Works is going to say, or whatever, you know, Public Health is going to say, no, you can't test in the middle of the lake. I mean, it's, it's for the safety of the people on the lake. So um, as long as there's nothing that's preventing us from doing that in the future, I mean, it, I think it would be a good idea to do it. But would that mean, I guess, I'm, I mean, water flows. Right. So if you find, is it cyanobacteria, is that what it's mm -hmm. called, um, mm -hmm. at levels that are too high in one basin, is there any imaginable scenario where you don't strongly suggest that people don't enter all the basins? No, I would. I mean, if it's high in one basin, our recommendation would be the same. Just to keep so it what's the practical effect of doing more? I, I, don't I think know. just for baseline data, data. just data okay. to see Everybody's how looking it's for increasing. Data. Yeah. Okay. And over the years, because this isn't going to go away. I mean, as the lake warms up and everything, I mean, it, it's not going to go away. It's not going to ever completely go away. It's probably going to keep progressing. Um, and so if we had some baseline data, um, that's You'd know what high. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Burke's been very patient. Yes. Let me go to him. Oh, no problem at all. Uh, I one quicker question was, I thought the town beach was already closed. I have a family membership. My daughter and I go down there frequently, but we thought it was closed after Labor Day. Anyway, yeah. this was before they pull the docks. The um, recreation department goes in and pulls the docks, yeah. and yeah. but people still go down to the beach. Oh, do they? Yes, the but there are no there. lifeguards. But it's still open. So, so it's still open it's, in that it's sense. In yeah. that sense, it's still open. I see. Well, you, yes, I've seen the sign since then. Now, so Laura know. was waiting to pull the docks when we en encountered the first uh, round. Yeah, I saw the signs when my daughter and I went fishing on Lake Point. I guess that's still okay. I mean, we don't keep the fish, so. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> and here's some more fundamental questions, and I appreciate the fact that the uh, Board of Health meeting is on Sto TV YouTube. That might be very informative to anyone who's listening, maybe uh, uh, more comprehensive than our discussion tonight. But first off, what is the relationship between the blue algae and this bacteria? I mean, maybe it's something so simple as... When the, as I understand it, as the blue algae starts to die off, it's then that the toxins are released from it and that's what's harmful to um, people's skin and the animals and whatnot. So it's when the blue algae actually starts to die off. The oh. decay process yeah. releases the toxins. And I understood from your meeting that you can close the lake or the beach based on three criteria. I don't remember the third, but one is the appearance of blue-green algae and the other one is just a test that shows a certain concentration of cyanobacteria, regardless of whether you see blue-green algae. So, for all we know, the cyanobacteria were higher than when that sharp-eyed lifeguard spotted it. In right? theory. Okay. Yeah. So, so the blue-green algae, when it dies off, it creates the cyanobacteria, or the it it, dis it disperses a toxin that is in the water, and it's the toxin which is the um, triggers all of the issues of with um, uh, skin and eye irritation. If you ingest water, some of the lake water, you can have gastrointestinal symptoms. Uh, you can have asthma-like symptoms if you inhale a spray that has mm. some of this toxicity in it. And um, small children and pets are more susceptible um, to the effects of toxins than adults. And livestock and pet deaths from ingesting this have, have occurred. So thank you. I didn't want to get. And to, oh, sorry. The didn't state, the, you know, I'm I'm just quoting here. It says, if you see water that appears to have a bloom, don't come in contact with or ingest the water. And treating it by boiling it does not get rid of the toxins. You're supposed to prevent contact. And again, I wasn't questioning any of your uh, dictum or, 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 or dictates here. I was just trying to 
get a better understanding of what the consequences are. Uh, thank you. I, I didn't want to get too morbid, but those health consequences seem very severe. Mm -hmm. uh, and is, is it, the, and is it toxins or bacteria or both? And, and, and it's actually not that important. The toxin the is the material oh, that the okay. bacteria exude when they die. I see. Okay. Uh, you, you, you scared the life out of me. I, I, I won't go near the way. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to. Let me go to Mr. Ryan. Yeah. Um, right now, are you, did I understand you're doing another round of testing this I year? I have to talk to Jim tomorrow and just get a little bit more advice from him um, to see if, to see what, it, to kind of weigh out the benefits of doing it and look at the weather that's predicted for the next few weeks. Um, to see, so yeah. I'm gonna ch I'm gonna chat with him tomorrow. Yeah, because one of the things I suppose I was, I suggest maybe considering is to do all three basins, and maybe this year you can, you know, doing doing the, you know, multiple places around the lake next year will be fine for next year, but if you may be able to get a some sort of a jump on figuring out maybe which basins are heavier in concentrations now, you may get a jump on gathering the data that you mentioned. Okay, thank you. That's and I don't know what, you know, how much it costs for each test, but mm -hmm. um, if you're having to drive it to Rhode Island, I'm guessing that it's not a cheap test. Okay. No, Otherwise, that's a good everybody idea. would be doing it. Um, the, the other thing is, I keep hearing about, I, I understand the beach being closed and the lake being closed. What exactly does it mean that you go and you put a net over people and drag them off the <laughs> lake oh, if they're can. riding a... Uh, oh, we can just advise them and post it on the website and get the word out there, post signs down there, and it really, at the end of the day, it's someone's decision if they're going to go on the water or not, but we've made it very clear that they shouldn't. Okay. Very clear. Okay. One, la one last thing? Sure. Um, was... If it's if it's that dangerous, I'll call it the pets and people. What about the wildlife that's down there? Have you seen any problems with I haven't wildlife? Heard, I have not heard of anything. <coughs> of anything. Yeah. You mean like an increase in like dead fish or dead Ducks. deer or something? Yeah. Ducks. I haven't heard anything. No. Nope. Yeah. We've had no reports. No. Yeah. And I think if that was occurring, you we would, would have heard that. that. I, yeah. We all would we have heard that. We would have heard that. Yes. Yeah. that. Yeah. I think we'll go back to Mr. Are you done? Yeah. Go back to Mr. Hawks. I just want to point out again, and I think, Marcia, you touched on it. I did some little back of the envelope research myself, and I think there have been known human deaths attributed to this. Is that correct? I that you agree with that it's in the data? So it, isn't, in the it is not just a question of it, your dog may die early. It is a question that is so serious that it could be fatal to humans. I just wanted that stated correctly, that I didn't misinterpret that. Um, and the last uh, two other questions. You, there was an issue at the meeting that I attended that we didn't, somebody implied, or I inferred, that there was not money in the budget to do these tests. Was that an issue in delay? That was me speaking just because I knew how much um, had been allotted, and what we had allotted was the money for testing at the beach for E. coli, which we do weekly all through okay. the summer season. And that was what was in our budget and without even thinking I just okay because right. I was very aware of it and mm -hmm. uh, we had literally did not have or don't have you know a whole extra pile of money when something like this happens and uh, it I realized that um, oh well we could go for a transfer of funds mm -hmm. you know this was an emergency but and we are going to plan accordingly for next year. Yeah, the budget. the budget's yeah. going to go up. That's yeah. the, okay. <laughs> but it is. Is that noted? Well, no. no. I, let me be. Let me perfect yeah. this questionnaire. Every department knows that if they need to swing expenses from one line item to the other, they simply email me. I approve it. It goes right okay. to the Julie, and the money's available. There's no delay there. Okay. Um, 
but it, it is also true that when you create a budget, they have a, our expense budget form is very detailed, and so they have, they plug in the number they want for analysis, for analyticals, right. and I give it to them. They obviously weren't yep. planning on, and if you buffered every budget by speculation, <laughs> we, we've just busted a budget. But as right. I said, all I have to do is contact me, we switch money right. around. And, and we know that. We know that. Yeah. yeah. So it's just one of those things that right. this took me by, you know, surprise. Totally understandable. And, and just so everybody understands, this year at least, nothing was delayed because of lack of money. No. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not. All right. Okay. Has, the bill's been paid, I guess, somehow. Right. Okay. That's good. Because we have money. That's <laughs> <a lot. laughs> Okay. But, I, but, I, somehow. but again, <laughs> using our chairman's uh, point of instruction is instruction. planning for next year I think this as you point out what this is more likely to recur than mm -hmm. go away right so hopefully next year's budget will allow for something without transfer and the last one last comment obvious the only testing you just mentioned the only when we say we test the beach the only testing is for E. coli those tests would not reveal the presence of, of this cyanobacteria Absolutely toxin. Absolutely not. So it's a whole different program, Absolutely. protocol. Absolutely. And, and the required. protocol is, is um, overseen by DPH right. and DEP. Okay. And um, it, Have you, you know, learned, just, I'm curious, <clears throat> that was in fact the Rhode Island lab the only one, or has perhaps you found what, th has anybody else tested for this anywhere in Massachusetts? We have not, not heard. Not heard. Have, uh, does the state of Massachusetts tell you there is no one in Massachusetts? They have a list right? of labs on the website that you can go through, but not everybody tests for this particular type of bacteria. Well, I, so I would, we're going to do a little research. I would encourage research, that <laughs> yeah. you find somebody <laughs> local. Thank well, you. The, well, other I, thing, the other thing, too, is um, you in order for it to be considered a valued result it has to be a certified lab certified we have a state. lot of certified of we have a lot of labs but not you know there there's not a huge list of certified labs and you want to be sure that you have you pick one that does this and right. is certified to do this All right I th thank you for <coughs> indulging my hey. Factually, it's true that DEP had no lab that they could recommend that was certified for this. In Massachusetts. In Massachusetts. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe you need to talk to our state rep about getting somewhere. <laughs> could, I, could I just make yes. one comment here as just listening to all this? I I, think well, I do want to get to Courtney. Can I get to Courtney first? I can. <laughs> Courtney? <laughs> so two quick things. Um, and I may just have missed this piece of information. Um, did. Do you have the budget, or is it part of your um, ability to put signage for the public that might come from outside of town to to notify them that we have a ban on using the lake? Um, and if not, maybe you put that in the pot for next year. Um, and you said signage. Signage. Okay. So the public so boat ramp, right? For so like the boat ramp, boats, or, yeah. or places where I don't know. We have the only major sign that we have is the big electronic sign that the police move use around and, do stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they move it around and actually the Board of Health, um, the MRC, sort of owns a little part of the sign so right. we, so you know, could use we can use it when we need it. But um, otherwise it's, you know, small signs and we under right. I understand, I heard from Cindy that some woman went to the lake to take her dog swimming. She'd never been there before. She lived in town, had not taken her dog to the lake, but found all these signs on the ground. So it sounds like someone went around and pulled signs down mm. and dropped them on the ground, and she didn't know. So she she said, you know, she d the water looked clear where her dog was. I didn't know that we had a dog beach. What it was called. Let me let so, the town administrator make his point. So, anyway. Oh, were you done? I'm oh, sorry. I was almost done. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, my, my last question was Is there anything that you feel you need to support you? In, uh, is there any local um, policy or, or um, some kind of, of support that you could have that would um, make your testing? Um, 
ability or requirements more robust than what the state is there anything that we can do for you that the state doesn't give you that would give you the power to test more proactively if you wanted to can we get back um, to you on that yeah okay. so i'm just throwing out <laughs> right, yeah. and so it's now a I'm really done. good question but <laughs> i think know. a proper yeah. thinking on it would would probably get a better answer great <laughs> okay. you'll take as long as you like um <clears throat> there's scientific protocol for all of this this is environmental science and all these suggestions i'm not saying anecdotally and otherwise by non-expert staff which we all are i would just encourage i mean i read quite a bit so i went on and read about it let the science and let the environmental experts drive what you do and why hard cases make bad law we also make bad budgets and if you're going to begin to expand on the analyticals each year have a scientific basis for you know, risk reward i mean you could test for 50 different um, bacteria, viruses other things at the lake and you could test the air ambience in our buildings i would just say let the science and the experts drive this rather than and i think it's a great idea to keep the lake boone commission and association actively involved in this because the, it's the eyes and ears front line that are going to do this and again the alternative would be very expensive of having police patrol with regard to looking for algae and the rest of it right the thing to do is make those at the lake aware of the fact that if you see certain or smell or the visual our senses you know alert us and let us go down and see if we can't um, take care of it but I, I'd be just cautious before we expand too aggressively on all of this until we feel real comfortable by the experts because again this isn't new you know they'll give you symptomatic manifestations of these things it's it's environmental conditions right so it's water it temperature is. it's air temperature it's wind it's all the rest this has been well investigated and I would let that drive what these committees talk about and what they actually change with regard to their methodology and approach just a less positive note sure. tying into the town administrator's comments uh, you we have the benefit now, collectively in Stowe, uh, a recently reconstituted uh, membership of the board of, uh, of the Lake Boone Commission. Uh, Chris Craven is now the chairman, uh, and Dan Barstow, the most recent uh, appointee, is the clerk. He works for NASA, but he's got little, he's got some very good uh, intuitive uh, think, thinking. Uh, I think you will find them eager to work with you uh, cooperatively and make any resources available that can be testing and, and whatever else. So uh, that that will take my, that was part of my uh, liaison report, so. Okay. Okay, Thank I have you. one more comment. As far as robust help, we found that communications and getting the word out was, we did, what we were supposed to do, we actually did a reverse 911. We put up on the website, we put signs up, we did everything we could think of, and social media took off with rumors, etc. And it got really out of hand, which meant that the Board of Health office telephone never shut up. And there were people calling with very strange questions. And um, so uh, some kind of a, of, of, of a central communication that every person in town can go to this place. Like a website. You know, we have a website, but it doesn't seem, I don't know, it they no, didn't get it. I know what you're saying, and that became yeah. clear, I thought, at your September 12th meeting, where people thought Just that there was a connection to shutting down the lake and Labor Day, that, oh, it's almost Labor Day, right. let's just shut down the lake. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, and it wasn't. And it, how do you get the message across? So I'm going to make one suggestion, and it's an old fashioned suggestion, but it seems to work whenever we have something that people are buzzing about, which is a public forum. You convene something at Pompo, we did this several times on Lower Village and you give everybody a chance to ask the questions that are buzzing around social media, 
you kind of backdoored your way into that with your September 12th meeting um, because you took a lot of questions and you let people, you gave people answers. And at, at, at the end, they were talking about some of the foolish things they had heard, not foolish, but you know, some of the things well, they had yeah. heard, false things they had heard. So I would suggest that, actually. Um, that it seems, it, it never avoids the problem entirely, but it, it seems to help. Um, I don't want to, I think maybe we're probably done with this, Mr. Wrigley. I think public forums are nice, but that's days after instant need for communication True. in this case was. True. And I will tell you this, as a practical matter, there was nothing more that could have been done. Yeah. There were 6,000 people signed up for E911 to gut it. It went on the police Facebook. Yep. It went on our website. It went to the online newspaper. Yep. Despite <laughs> expansive efforts, real time, many people either choose to ignore or don't go on any of these sites because they choose not to. But you can't get any more coverage than what that, and I know because I was part of the process of saying, look, use yep. the reverse 911. Use the face, use police because their Facebook and their Twitter account go. Everybody checks with them first. Go <laughs> online to the newspaper. All of those things were done, and pe there are still going to be people saying, "I didn't know what to do. I didn't hear any of the information," um, and the public forum won't help any of that. You'll get to it after the fact, and 30 or 40 people might show up, but the newspaper does the best they can, and all the rest. I just, I'm not certain as a practical matter. <clears throat> So I get the last word, um, and, and, and this is it before we go on to PFAS. Um, you know, I think you did a fine job, and what you're telling me tonight, so unless I'm missing something huge, is that the lake has to remain closed even tonight because we have not met the requirements. And as late as as late as four days ago, we got a test result that was too high. So contrary to some people's feelings, and it's easy for me to say, I don't live around a lake. I didn't pay a premium for a house because it's on the water. Um, the big issue to me that you'll be talking about in the winter is not could we have opened the lake earlier, faster, because it sounds like no. I'm a little surprised at this idea that a lifeguard is one who spotted it. And you've reassured me about that, that they're trained. Mm -hmm. yeah. but. I'm almost wondering if there should be a more systematic way of making a scientifically grounded way of testing for that rather than relying on someone's well, sharp eyes. Um, one of the reasons that the lifeguards are put on notice to look for it is they are there right. all day, day in and day out, Monday through Friday. Right. and. Um, so they really are the first line of right. defense for us, you know. It, um, it just so happened that, that this lifeguard called us and, um, you know, that's what, that's what set the train in motion. Right. And, um, but the LBC as a new resource, invigorate, right. I right. think gives you a lot more mm -hmm. cooperation, yeah. eyes and ears. So let's, Mr. Burke. Yeah, I thought maybe we could move on to the other yep. subject. That's a great idea. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you, Mr. Burke. Um, let's go on to PFAS. Just mm -hmm. one quick thing. Real quick? Yep, real quick. Bill, uh, my recollection is that a reverse 911 call costs about five, six grand, something like that? No, it depends on how lengthy it is. But it, um, it's, it's multiple thousands of dollars. Not per right? call. No? No. And again, I had advised after the first one right. went out, mm -hmm. use it in this case whenever right. you wish to. Right, but I suppose the point I was making is we don't make the decision to use that lightly so that when people get a reverse 911 call for whatever reason, they should listen to it and try <coughs> to understand it because we're it's not a making high alert. it's, it's a it's a high alert. We're not making the de yeah, decision to send it out lightly. Right. Because That's it right. does cost us money. Okay. Right. All right, PFAS. Um, there have been uh, some very thorough articles in the paper about PFAS. I'm going to take it as a given that we all pretty much know what it is. And but some of the for test the people results. that are watching at home, can we have an overview of what it is? Uh, PFAS is a chemical found in a lot of fire retardants and um, other, frankly, common day things like even dental floss uh, that has been in our 
groundwater for years. Um, the problem is that lately um, uh, acceptable thresholds are changing, whereas previously DEP would accept 70 parts per trillion. Um, they are now considering, they haven't done it yet, lowering it to 20 parts per trillion. This is per trillion. But this is federal regulation, isn't it? Is no, it these are state. A state. These state. are state. Um, okay. And that our schools center tested, uh, each of them was, was acceptable under the current standards of 70, but one, and I'm going to say it was Hale, was just above the, if it were adopted, new standard of 20. Right. Um, but the bigger question, there was a, there was a site discovered, an industrial site discovered in Hudson on Parmenter Road um, that we're all pretty sure is a source of PFAS. Um, you know, if it's associated with flame retardants and things like that, um, you got to wonder about the fire academy. You always got to wonder about the wildlife reserve, not because it's a wildlife reserve, but because of what it used to be. Um, and for this reason, I think you guys and Bill are working on trying to get the DEP to come in here to Stowe. And can you just update us on that? Sure. So last week, I believe it was, um, uh, Mr. Wrigley um, and our office manager, Cindy, um, talked with Mary Jude and Kate Hogan. Who's Mary Jude? She's with the DEP, I believe. She's, okay. a, she's a division head right. for okay. water, for uh, wastewater. Okay. At the Worcester District Office, Mary Jean Pigsley. Okay. And, um, and so they were all talking, and how we left it is we're going to do a public forum with them so that they can come, we can give out information to the public, answer any questions, and where it is right now is we're waiting for both of them to coordinate their schedules and give us dates that would work for both of them, um, because we feel more people would come out, and if it was just us, people aren't going to come out, but if these people come, they probably will. Um, and so once we get those dates, then the board will start to move forward with the planning of it and the um, just the planning of it and getting okay. the dates out when people know. Okay. So we don't have an agenda. We don't have anything yet. We're just waiting for the dates. Largely an issue out of local control other than obviously doing testing of municipally owned wells right. and keeping people informed, but largely a state issue, correct? Yes. Mr. Mr. Hawks. When the Army surplused the land, there was a, quite a flap about it at the time. There was one woman from Lake Boom who raised the banner, and as a result of that, the federal agency went in before they cleared the surplusing of the land. Uh, it was that whole 2,700 acres, whatever it is, was deemed a uh, part of a, a uh, Superfund site? Superfund site. Because they used to test for flame retardant clothing, and then, as apocryphal stories may be, they buried the stuff, the, the whole fabric and stuff in the ground. Whatever it was, the Army spent probably millions of dollars. Uh, it, is, it is the closest access to uh, land, is across from 20 feet across from my mailbox. Uh, at, at the end of Dawes Road. They came, they tested at that time, they, the Army, uh, a year or two later, looking for lead, nothing else. That was the, because of, and uh, the, the, there's seven houses on my street, all shallow driven wells, one of them is now deep, but, but at the time they were all shallow and they were, they were cleared for that. I guess in your forum, I would maybe go beyond that, since it is so localized and, and could there be a suggestion for the state to come back and perhaps test some random wells closest to that area to see if, if PFAS is, is it, it, does it go anywhere on the, on the scale to be concerned? And if so, I would hope that your forum would say, what can you do about it? If I've tested my well and found it to be there, can I, one of the questions I would ask at a forum, so I suggest you might want to think about answering or have someone answer, can I buy a handy jiffy filter and put it in my system and make it go away? Real estate agents are going to be <coughs> asking you that because if there's any danger of something that can kill you, or, or even if it doesn't because of the publicity that this has received, 
nobody's going to want to buy a house anywhere around there. You can filter it out. Yep. You no, no, but I'm saying. Yeah. I just just wanted to let you know that there is a house in town that was test that tested, out of curiosity, lives on Maple Street, mm -hmm. far end, other end of town, mm -hmm. and if she if the res the results indicate that um, by the current standards she's fine, by the proposed standards she's not. Which may be a very common result. And I think that this is what's going to happen yeah. to every to, to everybody who does the testing. Since this material has been around since the 50s, uh, um, it's, I think, safe to, to say that s somewhere in all of our lives, we have been exposed to some of this, somehow. Bill? So specifically, what's called granular activated carbon filtration, mm -hmm. which when I worked at Dufresne Henry Engineers, we did a lot of water and wastewater. That was new filtration technology in the 80s. It's off right. the shelf technology now. Yep. The schools are engaging a consultant, the schools for Stowe, to create a um, filtration system with GAC. And so the good news is that you can buy granule activated carbon filtration to filter out at the levels that are going to be required to meet the standards. Of. And it is amazing, back yeah. in the 80s, it was parts per million and parts per billion. No, it's trillion. Now it's parts per trillion mm -hmm. on many of these molecules that are, that are uh, causing the trouble. I think it's instructive to know that Kate Hogan is driving the process statewide. Yes. Because this is a statewide matter. It's not mm -hmm. by community. Now, there are some hotter spots, but they've already generally identified it by mm -hmm. independent wells across the state. You get a map and you can see it go online. It will show you uh, areas, but from the east to the west, north to south, and not just Massachusetts, obviously. But And so the idea of testing and maybe payment for testing and whether or not there might be some agency money, it would be driven by the legislature, of course, um, to see whether that's the case. But this is going to get the attention as it is already and gaining attention and more importantly gaining next steps and actionable <laughs> items and whether or not there's money or not for it but for me if as a homeowner if I was on a well it'd be important to know that GAC will filter mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know at the filtration <coughs> netting uh, level but it can be done but I if I were on a well, I'd be having my water tested no matter where I was. Yeah. I mean, I think you're getting at, at, at my concern, and, and I think maybe this will wrap up our, our discussion. When we have this public forum, I know we're going to hear, and I can hear Kate Hogan saying it, um, this is everywhere in the state. This is everywhere in the state. And I accept that. And there's filtration. But I want to know if we are at any particular risk here, whether it's because of the industrial site in Hudson, whether it's because of the former munitions depot at the wildlife refuge, whether it's because of the fire, whether it's because of anything. And to me, that requires some monitoring wells dug into the groundwater near, near those sites. And it also requires information about groundwater. Groundwater flows like any other river, and if it flows north to south, and these, for lack of a better word, hot spots are to our south, then that mitigates the risk very significantly. Um, and I have no answers to that stuff, and I want somebody to come in and talk to me about that. Okay. And geographic flow is not, it, water flows to the lowest level, period, north right. to south, east to west. The subsurface conditions here would have to be known. You'd have to know, right. and, and that's going to be a huge task if the cheaper and simpler task would be to test your water, period because the hydrogeological testing is going to have to take place area-wide to know which way all the water is flowing. You know, across one street it could be going this way and the other street it's going the other way. It would be a huge monumental task. I think the more direct and certain thing to do all is... Right. I thought know, aquifers were like rivers. They were like underground rivers. I okay. thought they, they did flow in one general direction. But well, well, maybe that can be covered at the public forum. Yes. But, uh, I mean, Mr. Hawks. Back in... 
maybe 1979, 78, there was an intensive hydrogeological study done. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the company that did it. I think it, it was EI. Um, I saw it when I first came here. Yeah. And it, it was more for the recharge and aquifer than it mm -hmm. was on the subterranean conditions. Because right. if, you, if you run into a, a ledge in the ground, it just blocks it. it goes, Water's, yeah. It's flowing downhill, whichever direction that might be. It could, be, but then it hits an obstacle which could run for miles, and it's going. It's misdirected. True. So it's it is. You can get general trends. True. But it's not it's easy like to do. It's not it's easy. Like There's a um, site just over the Stow line in Bolton, behind where Gen uh, Genrad was, the big brick building. In behind there, they have a um, system. They set it up years ago because they discovered that there was, um, um, they had been dumping chemicals in the ground out behind the building. Right. And, um, but that's been, they've been cleaning that site for at least 20 years, I think. Mr. Hawks, I'll give you the last question. Okay. Uh, I did uh, the, the last, uh, all right. okay. my last historical boat tour. History of the lake, and I have gained from uh, a former professor of earth sciences who's a good friend of mine, uh, and he and I compared a lot of notes. Lake Boone does not have any tributary running into it, it's filled by groundwater. Spring water. It? It's not yeah. springs, it's groundwater. It's a low point, as Bill says, and, the, and there are numerous points where that water is coming into the lake. It's, if there was no water coming into the lake, it wouldn't be flowing in, out in the Assabet River. So it's coming up from the ground because it's a low point. So it's, it, is, it is filling in there from surround. Maybe that's different for other parts of town, but this is a, a low point being filled with water that's coming from underground. All points which even specifies even more attention to the lake area. As a, as a potential problem for elevated levels. So I have not let Mr. Ryan, and Mr. Ryan has a comment. I just have one comment about it. Given that the, um, uh, there's talk about changing the allowable levels, and the allowable levels um, are, we've probably all been seeing the higher levels for years. I can see some people all of a sudden flipping out that, oh my God, we're not in compliance, we're all going to die. Um, I would imagine that there is a good scientific reason that the State Department of Public Health is looking at reducing them, but they haven't reduced them because, you know, they, they don't necessarily have consensus, but it may be worth bringing some of that up as much as you can that they're thinking about reducing it to make people healthier and maybe they think well you know what we're going to save two people two people out of a million from possibly getting something that they wouldn't have gotten somewhere else anyway okay. you know th there's probably good reasons by the way they've oh, already wait. made the change they haven't promulgated oh, yeah. it yeah the, the discussion's done the rates are going down they've already picked them they're just going to promulgate in October. So right. having that discussion, I, 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 I probably shouldn't still speculate on, on what the health effects of this are. Right. Any but, but, just, yeah, but the thing I is, haven't seen. Mm -hmm. I have not seen why they decided to lower the the level. Well, at the fear of extending this discussion any longer than I wish to, I could explain some of that. But I, I think we've reached our natural yeah. end okay. to this. I, I, I just think I just think it would be helpful, yeah. and I think we all look there, forward. There, there's, there's scientific basis to it. Sure, I'm but sure there, there is. People can disagree about where you actually cut it, but pregnant women, for example, all the rest of that technology is better. Things we couldn't even identify at parts per trillion That's now right. we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very good. much, both of you. Yeah. And thank we'll you. Let us know about discussion. that. Thank you. And Hope um, for cold weather. Yes. Cold <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. weather. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all. Have a good thank rest of your day. Thank you very much for coming in. All right, back to our agenda. I think we're up to item number eight, um, the appointment of a highway equipment operator. Um, and Brian Hatch, the acting superintendent of streets, is recommending the 
appointment of Chris Ogilvy to the equipment up to the equipment operator position, which has been posted for the appropriate length of time. And you have the posting. Anything else I'm supposed to mention, Mr. Town Administrator? No, we're backfilling. To use a highway term. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On openings. I just came to you. Know. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like the Ohio trying State to light University. The conversation here a bit. Uh, Ready for a motion? Do I have a motion? Yes. Does Mr. Ryan have any? Uh, no, I, I I'll take Ryan's word. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not up on fully up on the qualifications for a, an equipment operator. He's all the qualifications. Yeah. He's our best qualified guy. Fine. Then I apologize for uh, interrupting my colleague. Ms. Fresher. Mr. Moderator, on the recommendation of the Highway Mr. Department. Mr. Mr. I, I appreciate the promotion. I have to get a promotion, <laughs> sorry, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> it's getting late. It's, right. it's already gotten late. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, on the recommendation of the Highway Department, I move to appoint Christopher Ogilvie as equipment operator for the Town of Stowe Highway Department. Second. Motion made and seconded to appoint Christopher Ogilvie as a equipment operator, uh, a truck driver laborer position. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And that is unanimous. And now we have um, Mr. Hatch's recommendations about the disposal of surplus equipment. Um, and you have his explanation of the three items. Um, I will tell you, I had some email correspondence with Brian. I misunderstood the leaf back thing. I thought he meant it blew a motor and they replaced the motor and now we want to get rid of it so i said why are we getting rid of something where we just replaced the motor and he said no the whole leaf back um blew out we bought last year a whole new leaf vac mm -hmm. and now we're getting rid of the one with the blown motor it's junk because it's junk well it's got a blown motor somebody else might want to you know, we have the motor or replacement, I guess. I don't know if you can even do that. So, do I have a motion on this? You do. I move to authorize the disposal of surplus highway department items listed below. The leaf vac, two sander boxes, and a Chevrolet C7500 six-wheel sander truck. Second. Motion made and seconded to authorize the disposal as surplus equipment of three highway items, leaf vac, two sander boxes, and a six-wheel sander truck. Further discussion, Mr. Burke. So just a question. I just want to make sure I understand that uh, one, if we approve this uh, uh, procurement suggestion, then the um, or, uh, suggestion, of course, in procurement law, we're going to place this equipment on munici bid and see who buys it? I think that's the idea. Yep. That's what he's saying. Com buys or whatever it's called. We yeah, I think that's the idea. We're just declaring it surplus and available to be sold. It would be interesting to find out how much we gain for each of these. Is that possible to <laughs> follow up on? We look, why don't you send Brian an email? I'll find out about that. Let, let us know. I will build the cat, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's funny. Get away with anything around here. <laughs> 45 minutes ago, I, I was lieutenant governor. Third you know, degree. Down there. Oh, third degree would be interesting to see what they know. All right. Uh, uh, motion made and seconded to fine. declare this equipment uh, surplus. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the suit by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. And that is approved. Um, we, uh, item 10 is on there. I think that's my mistake. It's not really a separate item. I think we're folding it into the town administrator's report. The, uh, we don't have any, anything separate on the mm -hmm. town administrator's search. You're just going to update us and talk about. Yeah, we're just going to yeah. update them on our working group. And yeah, that, that's my mistake. I asked I asked Phoebe to put that on there. Um, so I think we are up to the town administrator's report. And I'll start with um, our working group with respect to the uh, process of replacing the current TA. Next number of months. I believe I attached to my activities report a posting that the four of us. The moderator, Brian, Jim, and myself uh, have our offering for con your consideration um, to then post with regard to those who may be interested in, become, in being considered to be appointed to the screening committee. As you know, uh, the moderator makes three of those choices and the board makes two. 
Um, this is the first step, which would be accepting the posting. Obviously, the moderator agrees with the with this uh, recommended posting because he's on the working group. So, one posting to serve both purposes is the intent here, which is all the way through this process. What we're trying to keep in mind to be efficient, and effective with this is that if we can consider these things jointly, because effectively it's a joint appointment process, that would be helpful. So, uh, if you agreed with what you had in your um, as an attachment to my activities report then it could be blessed and then the timing as to when to release one of the things that we're working on as a group is a timeline for deliverables past this first step and for example near-term deliverables would be the selection process itself so we're imagining that a single posting goes out candidates within the prescribed time who meet these requirements by the way so quickly I, I think they're self-explanatory but the first is in order to be considered an applicant you need to be a voter in still so I we put that at the top and then the other um, comments that we've got in there and it there is the proscription that you can't be considered if you're an elect currently elected official and, and by that, the implication is to be an elected official on a board, but either singularly or an elected official on a board, or what it terms in the charter, a member of a, a belonging to a multi-member board. So I read into that to mean official boards, boards of the planning board, the board of assessors, the board of health, the rest of it, not and it doesn't say committee, but the way I would interpret it, something like the finance committee was probably intended there, and it might have been an oversight not to say committee and board, but it clearly doesn't mean some ad hoc um, committee. I think what they're saying is they don't want elected officials. They didn't when they wrote it. And then a nexus to that would be a, an official board member, either elected or appointed. That's the way, I think that's the common reading of that language. You can't be an elected official and you can't serve on a town board. Probably can quibble about whether you want to include the finance committee board or not. I think to serve the spirit of it, that's what they were intending. Yeah. So, so yeah. even though it didn't mention that language. And it does allow for an employee. Obviously, it would have to be a voter in Stowe, mm -hmm. right? But we have several employees who are from Stowe presumably they vote. Um, one of the things that we're discussing ourselves along with um, the process is, I know I've mentioned it myself and when we meet next, we'll, I'd like to carry on that conversation. I feel strongly about um, an employee being a member of the five, either as a appointed member or maybe it doesn't say anything about you can't, that you can't have an ex officio or something, but it, no one's impacted more by this appointment than the people who work here. And I think their interests and needs should somehow be represented um, or not. But that's just my own personal opinion, but one of the things we'll talk about and then come back with as we're looking at go the process going forward. So a charge to the committee would be something that we would offer f as a recommendation. What are the, what's the charge of duties and responsibilities now that if the posting's accepted? And then one thing that's been roughed in again is this six month timeline and order of succession for deliverables but also how to go about the um, interview process for the appointments and we've begun discussion of that but we're not prepared to give you our recommendation on those other matters but they're next in line for us and so we're meeting regularly but if we get past the posting then those other things would um, come along um, soon for your consideration and acceptance or not you know and then after the committees formed we've begun discussions about what if any involvement should this working group have and I use the word technical assistance to provide to the committee at their request you know what the nature of I can think of things I think others on the working group feel the same way where we could be helpful um, screening committees of this nature for this purpose Unless, especially in the municipal sector, because there are things that you have to be cognizant of 
with regard to open meeting law and other things that we could offer help there. And then there is a key component in this charter that says that it's the screening committee that is supposed to um, receive and review all applications that come to them. And then basically what I will use the word is a background check for those that you might want to move forward to interview. Their working record, a couple other things. Now, that's where, for example, um, technical systems could come in handy because, you know, unless you've done a lot of that, you know, and there are consultants, for example, that can provide that very service that might be worth a consideration, those background checks, because they're not easy to get to filter down through if you've done any of this, and I've done a lot of it. References, you know, I'm not saying I won't accept them from the candidate, but that's the mm -hmm. first level of review. That's certainly not going to be the last. If you want to get, because a bad hire, especially in, in the municipal sector, you're going to have to live with. And so those kind of things we're talking about, and Jim and Brian can add from that, but right now it's the posting. I would add just two things. Number one, we're working on a draft timeline. It's, it's tougher than you might think. You don't want to get started too early because you don't want to pick the person too early because they will have to give notice to their, you know, it becomes public that they are up for the job at the end of the process. And people might not want to risk losing a job. Um, and so you can't start too early. Obviously, you don't want to start too late for obvious reasons. Um, if you want to give the selection committee, screening committee, as much time to work as possible, you need to time Bill's formal announcement to be exactly the same time. You want to get the interviews of the screening committee members out of the way. I was to give you a fair warning that at our last meeting, we were thinking about recommending to the full board of selectmen a Saturday working session um, sometime this winter uh, or maybe January to plow through interviews of candidates for the screening committee. Just a heads up. Uh, it, you know, that's often what is done when we have to pick a public safety chief or something like that. You just sit down and you just get through it. Um, but that's, you'll be hearing, I, th I think you're going to be hearing more, much more about that in October. Brian, you want anything? I have nothing to add. So, so for this evening, the posting that you've got, if that's acceptable to you, or you want to have a conversation about it? Would you like a motion for that? I think I would. Uh, uh, just you move to accept it? the uh, proposed posting for the members of the screen. As submitted in the draft in this document for us tonight. So moved. Second. Mo it's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, proposed draft of the um, uh, posting from members of the screening committee. Further discussion? Uh, there, there is a question mark in what we just voted to approve. Yeah. It's well, it's only because of, we haven't picked a date yet. We yeah. approve the process it's and then the, you fill in the exactly. date. Exactly. Yeah, so that's just the content. The, the posting above okay. that line is the that's content. Fine. Okay. It's Thank you. Obviously, this stuff, is in, we have to put some other pro forma language in there. But that's what that was indicating. Further discussion? Seeing, hearing, not. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Any questions? Anne? Uh, no, I think I'm set. Okay. By the way, one of the agreements we've made as a group is yeah. that Dave, um, the moderator, is going to be our voice to the newspaper by submitting periodically, just so we can keep the public informed beyond what we discuss here, saying the same thing, hopefully. <laughs> Dave is saying. Oh, he's already sent me a whole update yeah. a while ago, but yes, he's, he's, so, he's right on it. So Dave, yes, so Dave is perfunctory when it comes to that, and so we keep you informed, Dave keeps it's himself nice. informed as an appointing authority, and then keeps the paper informed, so we're yep. hopeful to keep everybody informed. Okay, and still your floor, Mr. Wrigley. Yes, so um, one of the items here is for the executive session on the Chief's contract. Yes. So we'll go into that there. I did want to let you know that the deadline was last Friday for um, applications. Candidates who are interested in being considered our next highway superintendent received 22 of them. And 
I think I've explained to you that we, I've had a working group in place for many years with regard to the heads of public safety. And other than replacing Mike Clayton, because it's the highway superintendent's position, is um, Bruce Fletcher has agreed to serve with us. So other than that, um, we'll get the um, applications out to the members of the group. So it's um, the liaison from your board, um, Selectman Ryan, myself, and the heads of public safety. So both chiefs and then Bruce representing highway. And um, we'll get started and go from there. In the meantime, we have someone serving as a acting superintendent. Yeah, that's good. Um, and the, essentially that's it for my activities report for public right. consumption. Um, let's do liaison reports. Mm -hmm. Liaison reports, keeping in mind that we still have an executive session. Uh, not that anybody should read anything into that. Mm -hmm. uh, I will start with Courtney. So, um, the Community Preservation Committee is fairly quiet. They're reviewing open projects. Um, they have new members that are being oriented to the committee. Um, membership has changed from the Finance Committee, the Board of Assessors, and the Council on Aging, and um, there's a pending new member from the Conservation Commission. <coughs> on the um, Open Space Committee, um, they're in the process of, of making an assessment um, with their um, ranking system for the um, Still Acres Driving Range lot. Um, due to the golf course planning conversations, it, it brings up uh, potential for perhaps uh, for exploring um, connections, trail connections in South Stowe or West so um, for the Emerald Necklace Trail, um, which has some gaps, so that they're looking at at the golf course transition as an opportunity to, if there were a transition, as an opportunity to, to connect the Emerald Necklace Trails better. Um, <clears throat> and Although it seems like official connection to the Minuteman bike trail is unlikely, um, the Open Space Committee still thinks improvements to the track road could be pursued. Um, and they are short two members. They um, have a prospect that they might, that they are inviting to the meeting, but some of our other boards and committees, they they're short and don't want to reduce their their uh, membership because they like having a larger membership and what that brings. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Ryan. Um, next uh, town hall reno committee meetings tomorrow night. That's about all I got for you for right now. Thank you. I don't have much. I got a complete streets meeting on Thursday, but uh, I have to miss it. Um, I did want to draw your attention. The library is holding uh, meet the director candidates um, meetings uh, this Thursday in the middle of the afternoon. Um, I think it's at the library. Um, that's all I got. Mr. Hawks. Well, this was going to be the big news. I'm sure you've seen some email communication concerning Tri Town. <coughs> oh, Mr. Pacheco, who is town administrator in Lancaster sent out a couple of very confusing uh, posts. One is uh, the meeting is going to be held this Thursday, but I haven't received any items for the agenda. That was quickly followed by we have to cancel the proposed meeting, not because of lack of, of, of an agenda, but because the posting was not done correctly in Lancaster. The beat goes on no trade down for somewhere in the vicinity of two years. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Burke, thank you. Uh, I could not attend the Council of Aging meeting, but I met with the Executive Director last week uh, personally, and she advised me of what's going on there. Nothing to report to the Board, especially given the 
<coughs> lateness of the hour and the executive uh, session that's coming up, I just wanted to point out that uh, or respond to the chair's directive that uh, I check into uh, remote participation by uh, telephone and uh, internet and uh, I've checked with uh, our IT director and also uh, executive director for um, Stow TV. It is doable uh, certainly easily with telephone uh, conferencing and then uh, also doable with um, up on the third floor easily with uh, uh, video conferencing but uh, that uh, that presupposes that we're going to decide on uh, affirmatively adopting remote <coughs> participation. I'm no longer I'm no longer uh, of the mind that that is necessary, but of course it's, uh, it would be a board decision. I think on my list of things to do to try to draft something together, I'm, I'm going to take that under advisement. I, let's see what the immediacy of it is. Um, it'll be back on the agenda. It'll be back on the agenda. Um, seeing nothing else, uh, am I, I, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of conducting strategy sessions uh, for negotiations with non-union personnel, and we will not be returning to open session. Mr. Chairman, I move to continue in executive session pursuant. Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, for the purpose of conducting strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and to adjourn thereafter, not be entering open session. Second. Motion made and seconded to enter an executive session for the stated reason. It will not be returned to open session. This requires a roll call vote. Ms. Fresha. Aye. Mr. Aye. Ryan. Mr. Hawks. Aye. Mr. Burke. Will the moderator and chair be making a finding that uh, open discussions <laughs> will be? I'm yes. talking. Yes. Will uh, be deleterious to the uh, oh, to the negotiations as required under the statute. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes. Uh, then I. Discussion open session I'm being okay. detrimental to the negotiating position of the town. Thank you, Madam Town Clerk. Okay, we stand in executive We're off. session. We're off. Sto TV. Thank you.